Did you guys not shower this morning or something? Everybody's sitting in the back. We have an opportunity today. Do we always recognize those opportunities? No. But we have an opportunity today, and that's to offer our Thanksgiving, because this week we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving, right? You guys been salivating about that already? You can look back in the back and start salivating some more there. And thank you for not taking one of those damaged pumpkin pies for a, a sacrifice. Yeah, it's, so, do we really want to offer Thanksgiving this morning, this morning? Do we really want to do it? So if you think about what God has done for you, at the cross, his son was sacrificed. He gave his son. His son was obedient. There had to be atonement for our sin. It had to be done. It had to be done. Do you think about that each day? Of the magnitude of his gift to us through his son. The magnitude of the need of your sin, our sin, my sin, to be atoned for. I couldn't pay for it. I could never work enough to pay for it. I couldn't say thank you enough. To compensate the gratitude in my heart for what he's done. I'm hoping that's starting to resonate within your heart that you're really wanting to say thank you, Lord. Now, we can do it all the time out of our, our mouth, but doing it out of our heart in action. You know, there's an old adage that has been said, actions speak louder than words. So our, our actions should reflect the gratitude within our hearts. So that means our life, the, the way we live our life each day, reflects the gratitude within our heart for what he's done for us. In some way, I would think that would want to come out of our mouth to say, did you know what God did for me? Have you heard what he's done for me? He's done that for you. Do you really understand what he's done for you? You know, that gratitude should come out of our hearts to be conveyed to those around us. And those we work with, those we rub shoulders with, should know that we have gratitude in our hearts for what he's done for us. And maybe we haven't done that yet, but we have another opportunity today to do that in passing out some meals. So if you have not signed up for that, I want to encourage you to be a part of that today. Why? There's just something about carrying a meal to somebody and sharing that with those who may not have the means this year to have that, and we can bless them. But that's just part of it. The other part of that is that we can tell them why we have gratitude in our hearts. Why? Because they, their sin was atoned for. Boy, that's tough, going up somebody cold, cold turkey. Yeah, you're going to carry your frozen turkey. Yeah, that's cold turkey, all right. That, was, that rolled off there, didn't it? Cold turkey, just tell them, you know, Jesus cares about you. You know, there's a, there's a secret in witnessing that, can I just pray for you? Well, Lord, I just want to thank you for the, the love you've expressed to us through the sacrifice of your son, that my sin was forgiven, and that through that forgiveness, I have eternal life through you. Can you do that in prayer? We, you're not telling Billy Bob in front of you. You're just praying. Well, guess who's having to listen to you pray? Billy Bob. And what's Billy Bob thinking now? Well, if God forgave him, could I have that too? Well, sure. You know, you just take the pressure off yourself when you're witnessing to somebody. 
can I just pray for you? Well, then that puts the pressure on you, doesn't it? Well, I've got to pray then. Well, I don't like praying out loud. Well, God likes to hear it. What an opportunity do we have today to testify to those that we're going to deliver meals to. Well, let's begin by testifying to the Lord out of the gratitude of our hearts, how thankful we are for what he's done for us. So let's just do something just a little different. We don't have a lot of folks in here, but this is going to put you in a tight spot. Go to somebody right now and say, can I pray with you and tell you how thankful I am for what God's done for me? Oh, that's, that's really stretching it, Brian. I can't do that. Let's do it. Let's get up. We're going to start service different. Let's go tell somebody how thankful we are. Man, that's tough to do. Come on. Boy, now that we've overcome that little ch challenge, we could probably do that after the service when we take those turkeys out to those families, right? So I want you to think about that. So as we begin to worship, let's stand. Father, we give you this time. We give you our hearts. We thank you for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, last week we looked at um, looked at this RUN card. It is our, our reason for being. We've got these in the back table. Last week they were in your bulletin. Uh, really our reason for being, why we do what we do. And we trust that this, these are some simple guiding principles uh, of everything that we do at Legacy Church. Our vision is to create a healthy environment where people can grow closer to God, grow, grow closer to, to one another. Our mission is the Great Commission to develop fully devoted followers of Christ. Everything we do wants to be toward that end, to develop fully devoted followers of Christ. And our focus, kind of how we do that, is to grow deep and to reach wide. Last week we looked at this whole thing of growing deep. Um, this morning we're going to look at reaching wide. Um, when we grow deep in the Lord, that leads to a desire to reach beyond ourselves. So we're going to open with uh, the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In these two verses, verses 14 and 15, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, Paul says this, For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died and he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Father, we thank you. We are so thankful that you have sent your son to experience all that we should have experienced, that he might offer us far beyond anything we ought to experience, your goodness, your grace. And Lord, we're thankful for that. Jesus, thank you for giving your all. Lord, may we, would you give us grace that we might serve you and not ourselves. Lord, would you show us kind of what it looks like this morning to reach wide, to reach beyond ourselves, to reach out to others. 
And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Growing deep. We looked last week at this whole thing of growing deep, our need to grow deep. If we're not growing deep, we're stagnant or we're even actually regressing. The way to grow deep is to walk in the ways of God by way of the Word of God and the reason to grow deep, that we might be a blessing to others, that we might be pleasing to God. Growing deeper in, our, in, the, in the grace and knowledge of God. We looked at that last week. This morning, I want us to look at this other side of our tagline, motto, um, logo, whatever. Growing deep, reaching wide. Reaching wide. Paul says here in the midst of this discussion that he's writing about, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he, he says we are ambassadors of Christ. We, we uh, persuade men. We persuade men because we, we're ambassadors of this message that we have. And he says it's Christ's love that controls us, that compels us to reach beyond ourselves. It's not just because we're good giving people. It's the love of Christ in us that causes us to reach beyond ourselves because we are ambassadors of Christ as Christ followers. This week, I don't know if you knew this, but um, this week is Thanksgiving. <laughs> How could that be? In our culture, we kind of celebrate or, you know what, for most folks, it's a day off work, so that's good. Um, but as those who are truly thankful, to, at the time, we ought to be thankful every day, Right? It's a virtue. Gratitude is a virtue. Uh, we ought to be thankful every day, but I'm thankful that our culture does take a moment to say thank you. And our, uh, initially in our culture, the, the thanks was to be pointed toward God, right? Thanking Him for His blessings. And grateful people express their gratitude through, through their words and, and grateful hearts, but also grateful people express their gratitude through grateful actions. What we do, not just, well, I thank you, thank you, God, for this and that, but, but we act it out. I think Brian started us on that note this morning. Paul says that the love of Christ compels him, motivates him to serve others. The love of Christ, his love for us, love for Christ, our love for him, causes us to reach beyond ourselves, reach beyond our own needs, which are many, right? We've all got a lot of needs. We're very needy people, but true Truly, the love of Christ compels us to reach beyond our own needs to the needs of others, right? Thus, how thankful we ought to be that we get to put together 27 meals and deliver them to people today. That's an act of gratitude, not just gathering in a church service and saying, thank you, God, which we need to do, but to say, God, we want to show our gratitude to you by serving others. And what a great opportunity we have today to do that. So let's look at this whole thing of reaching wide, reaching across the aisle in here, reaching across the street in your neighborhood, reaching across the world as we have opportunity. So number one, let's take a look at we must reach across the aisle. Reaching wide begins with here, the family of God, reaching across the aisle. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, writer of Hebrews writes this. Take care, brothers, lest there be any of, uh, any, of you, any, in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the, the living God. But exhort or encourage one another every day, as long as it is, as it is called today. Isn't that a great way to put it? Like, which day should I, should I encourage people? Every day. Today. Every day that ends with why in the English language. That none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. There's the warning. Encourage one another. Why? That we might not be discouraged. Reaching wide begins with reaching across the aisle. The, the, the family of God, your church family, right? Those that you spend time with, worship with, serve with, minister with. The household of God. Those who are already in the boat, right? Many... Uh, a uh, Bible teacher has compared the church to a lifeboat uh, that is going, mo motoring through the frigid waters, rescuing souls out of the water. But we also need to minister to the people that are in the boat, right? 
Um, you know, you can fill your boat up with people pulling out of the water, but you got to minister to the people in the boat, right? Make sure their needs are taken care of. We need to reach across the aisle, minister to one another. The aisle of our, of our local fellowship, the aisle of our broader uh, fellowship of believers in, in this community. I'm so thankful for uh, the Gary County Ministerial Association. Uh, 13 years ago when I came here, I uh, went to, attended my first um, GCMA meeting, and shortly after that, I'm wrangled into, blessed with the opportunity to <laughs> serve um, the old voluntold thing. What a blessing to serve this community of churches. And at that meeting, I said, guys, it was at first, I remember, first Christian church. And I, at, toward the end of the meeting, I said, guys, this is amazing what you got here. This does not happen even within my own denomination. And this is denomination, broad denominational cross-section of churches in the community. I said, guys, this just doesn't happen. Uh, and they all look at me cross-eyed, but it doesn't. And for the last 13 years, and last Thursday, I heard the same thing. We have guest speakers, different kind of ministries and, and agencies that are serving the community that we want to partner with. Over and over and over, they say, hey, this doesn't happen anywhere. What you got going is a good thing. We need to reach across the aisle. In our local community and, and across your, your friends who attend other churches, we need to encourage one another. Why? I'm glad you asked. Number one, because we all need encouragement, right? Don't look at me like that. You know you do. We all need encouragement, right? It is a matter of fact, it is a matter of fact that it is so easy for us to, to stumble, to drift away in our walk with God and our trusting in God, right? It is so easy. You know it is. So easy to stumble and drift away and the backdrop of these words in Hebrews, take care, take care, lest there be an evil, unbelieving heart in any of you leading you to stray away from the living God. Yep, that's a possibility. But encourage one another day after day that you might not be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. This is all couched in the, in the backdrop of Israel's repeated failure to trust God under the old covenant before Christ. Over and over, God would do amazing things, and he'd win the affection of his people, and then they would wander off. So to us, it's so easy for us to turn away from the living God and to a path of discouragement, right? Discouragement is so easy to come by, isn't it? It's sold everywhere. I mean, everywhere, available at retailers near you. Discouragement is, is sold everywhere. It's available everywhere. And the lie, here's the lie. Uh, I'm the only one. I'm the only one in this town that has a garage full of discouragement. Right? Every one of us hear that. That's a lie. We all face discouragement. We all need to be encouraged. Everybody needs encouragement. We all do. None of us super saint. That doesn't exist. Jesus alone we all need encouragement. I do, you do, the person sitting next to you, you can look at them. They need encouragement. I know I shouldn't have done that. I just, I, I think my notes say don't do that. Life is filled with, with unexpected events, unwanted situations, unmet needs, unmet hopes, unmet dreams, right? Right? This broken life is filled with all kind of unmet expectations. Discouragement lurks around every corner. Isn't that encouraging? It is the reality of the human existence, isn't it? It's just so easy to get discouraged because our hope gets misplaced and we just don't know. That's the whole thing. We just don't know if this thing's going to take me down or if I'm going to survive it. Why is that? Well, the short answer, Sunday school answer is sin. Sin entered into the world. Everything's a mess. A broken world leads to broken stuff and broken relationships and broken hopes, right? We all need encouragement. That's why we need to reach across the aisle to other brothers and sisters in Christ because we all need encouragement. Secondly, 
because we all have something to offer. We all have something to offer. The good news in this whole discouragement's everywhere. It's knocking on your door. It'll sneak in your door today, guaranteed. The good news is you can do something about it, right? You can do something about it. Yep, you, you with all your imperfections uh, and all your insecurities and all that, you can do something about it because God has commissioned Christian. God has commissioned you to encourage others. Yeah, well, I, I'm not really the one to do that. I don't have anything to offer. Let me tell you what you have to offer. Let me give you a list of things you have to offer. How about a caring word, right? A caring word at a proper time. How about a story or experience? So, yeah, I've been through that. Um, two, I, I, I can kind of identify with where you're at. A story, an experience. How about an insight or an angle? Uh, you know, that happened to me, but here's how God met me in that place. How about this? A listening ear. A listening ear. Just to hear someone bear their frustration. People typically don't need formulas. They don't need quick fixes. You know what? Counseling is largely listening. Listening to where the person is. And identifying. Yeah, I don't, I don't have many answers, but I'm in this thing with you. Right? That is encouraging. We all have something to offer. But we got to reach outward. We got to reach beyond ourselves. We got to get beyond the uh, I have too many of my own issues. And maybe, here's the deal maybe when I'm perfect, then I'll encourage the guy next to me. Okay, you're going to be waiting a while. I mean, just heads up, you're going to be waiting a while. Perhaps, perhaps, just by design, for imperfect people to reach out and encourage imperfect people. Maybe that's God's design. Imperfect people. Reaching out to imperfect people in the power of a perfect God. How about that for a formula? Im well, I'm just not the really... I, how could I encourage imperfect people reaching out to imperfect people in the power of a perfect God? Reaching across the aisle. Reaching wide begins in-house, reaching other brothers and sisters, encouraging, because we all need encouragement. We all have something to offer. We all have something to offer, right? Whether you've got three postgraduate degrees in counseling or if you're brand new to the game, we've all got something to offer, right? We can, we can encourage others. And it all starts in-house, reaching out to one another. And then reaching wide goes from across the aisle to secondly, we must reach across the street. We must reach across the street. In Luke 22, Jesus shares with us a parable. Excuse me, Matthew 22. Matthew 22, verse 9. We're just going to jump right in the middle of this parable. Which time Jesus says, Go therefore to the main roads, and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. We must reach across the street. The parable of the wedding banquet. There's a king. Jesus tells this parable. There's a king. His son is getting married. He calls a wedding banquet for his son, sends out the invitation to the uh, highly esteemed little list of invitees to this wedding banquet. It's another step outward. Uh, reaching out to those in the household of God, and then Jesus says, go into the highways and byways. Reaching out to those near us, around us, those with whom we share a cultural context. I know American culture is very diverse, and yet within the in United States, Europe, largely, we're speaking the same language, uh, kind of familiar with the same cultural norms, at least in America, um, those that we share culture with, even though we're in different places, different um, contexts, reaching across the street. Number one, why? Why are we reaching across the street? Glad you asked. Number one, because the sun is worthy. The shock factor, and most parables have a shock factor. They're telling this parable, and they're like, oh, how could that be? And it's a, it's a truth that we need to hear. The shock factor of this parable of the wedding banquet 
is the indifference to the king's son. At wedding, uh, banquet invitations had been sent out, and most, if not all, um, of the invitees said, ah, you know what, I think I'm busy that day. You know, I got, I got kids got a ball game. I got this or that. Can you imagine? In this kingdom, the king's son is getting married. He invites you to, to celebrate his son's wedding, and you say, yeah, you know, I, I really don't have time. That's a shock factor of this, of this parable. The king's son was, was worthy of considerable honor, right? It's the king's son. Matter of fact, you might want to disappear for a while. You say you're not coming to the banquet for the king's son. The king's son is worthy of considerable honor. God's son is worthy of ultimate honor. God's son is worthy of absolute honor. The paramount theme, paramount theme of, of Scripture is worthy is the Lamb of God who was slain for the sins of the world. Worthy is the Lamb of God. The whole parable is about the fact that invitation has been given. Worthy and honor are, are certainly due an earthly royalty member, but that pales in comparison to the worth and honor that are due the King of Kings. Jesus has come. Why do we reach across the street? Because God's Son is worthy to be recognized, to be worshipped, to be celebrated. He is worthy. Imagine if uh, your favorite celebrity or athlete or politician, do people even have favorite politicians anymore? Don't, don't go down that road. Don't go down that road. Let's, your favorite celebrity or athlete comes to your house. Don't you think you'd tell maybe some of your family members, you know, the ones you still like, uh, and your friends, uh, hey, so-and-so is coming to my house. Man, you ought to, you ought to come. Don't you think? How much more worthy is it that the Son of God resides in your home, right, by His Spirit? Why don't you come? Wouldn't you come and... And just, would you come and just meet him? Come and just be around him, right? Which leads us to our second, why should we reach across the street? Because the invitation has been given. The invitation has been given. God extended the invitation to come and behold my son. The whole parable is about Jesus coming and word gets out. God's son, our savior, the perfect God man is here. Come, come. And people said, yeah, you know, I'm busy. I just don't have time. Come and behold my son. Come and worship him. Come and celebrate him. To everyone we know, right? Everyone we know, that invitation has been given. Everybody you know, that invitation has been given. The sad reality is many, most, say most, say, yeah, I'm just too busy. Really don't. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Not interested. Yeah, I think, I think I'm good. I don't need to really meet this one who created me and the one who I will stand before one day. With little desire to be a part of God's eternal kingdom, no, I'm, I'm good. Today, the invitation has been sent not just to a privileged few that the, on the king's good guy list. The invitation has been sent to everybody you know. And we are to deliver that invitation, right? Jesus says, Matthew 11, verse 28, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The invitation has been extended, and we are the carriers of the invitation, right? Well, maybe a Bible will fall out of the sky in this guy's backyard. We have been given the job of being the carriers of the invitation, right? Right? God can rain Bibles down, and he does that. But God has commissioned us to deliver the invitation to the highways and byways, to the main roads, to the street corners, wherever people, wherever people are. Go and distribute the invitations. That's our job, right? Go and distribute the invitations. The king's son is here. Come and worship him.
what a privilege it is to, uh, you know, we're gearing up for Mardi Gras and, um, you know, just, yeah, the most effective evangelism is friendship evangelism, but there is a place for mass evangelism. And what a, what a privilege it is to join a couple hundred, I think Mark called us knuckleheads, <laughs> amen, um, and just to see what God does, just to extend invitations. Hey, there's a million of them, a couple hundred of us, and hey, the king has offered a, a, an invitation. What a privilege for many times going to Sturge's bike rally and just engaging folks and sharing Jesus with them, to Indy 500 and all those kinds of things, but going to the highways and byways, going to the main streets, the main roads, I think my ESV says. Where is that? Well, that's, that's that path between that you beat every week between your house and the store, your house and, and your workplace, that, that path that you are on daily, weekly, where you run into people. It's where the people are, right? Uh, in Jesus' day, it would have been the town square and the busy uh, routes where people would be walking, go into those places where people are. Today, I believe, I believe social media is the highway and byway of today. It's where everybody hangs out. Um, a few years ago, I got revelation insight, maybe revelation a little too dramatic, about Facebook that maybe I'll share with you sometime. Because um, we got, we don't have time today. Um, Social media is where people are. That's where people are hanging out. It's just a great place to go and offer the invitation. It's where people are. It's where people gather. Reaching across the street. Why? Because the sun is worthy and because the invitation has been given. Reaching to those in our cultural context, uh, those that we can kind of identify with. Uh, again, I realize America is very, very diverse culture today, but we can still identify with people uh, around the country, across the street, across the nation, across our state, right? Reaching wide. Across the aisle, that's where it starts. Encourage one another. Across the street, go to your friends, neighbors, those, the main roads, the highways, byways where people are and invite people to come to the banquet. Everybody is welcome. Great parable. Um, is there such a thing as not a great parable? But Matthew 22, uh, do you good to remind yourself of that? And third, we must reach across the world. We must reach across the world. A couple pages later in Matthew 28, 18, 19, 20, we quote this a lot around here. Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. All authority. He owns all authority. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have, I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's a promise. It's a command. It's a commission. It's a promise. We must reach across the world. The Great Commission. Go, make disciples of all nations, baptize them, uh, walk them through what it is to be fully committed to Christ, the picture of baptism, and then teach them, Jesus said, everything that I've commanded you. Every follower of Jesus is called to go and to make disciples. Why? I'm glad you asked. Number one, because Jesus deserves to have his story told. Jesus deserves to have his story told. That, that truth, that line was shared with me probably 20 years ago, on a bus from Lincoln, Nebraska to New Orleans to do an outreach to Mardi Gras. And a good friend of mine, Pastor Jim Bates, uh, introduced me to that truth. Jesus deserves to have his story told. Tell me that isn't good. Jesus deserves to have his story told. What is his story? His story is the gospel. That Jesus came, walked, through this life, perfect, without sin, then took the punishment that I deserve, gave his life on that cross, rose again on the third day. Jesus came to rescue those who could not rescue themselves. Jesus deserves to have that story told. 
what's the best story you've ever heard? Um, Jesus is the best story you've ever heard, and he deserves to have his story told. People are in great need, and he has a great story. Man, why is life so hard? Let me share with you the story of Jesus. His story should never become the best-kept secret in town, right? We're not to be secret agents for the gospel. His story should never be the best-kept secret in town. We need to reach across the world. The primary concern of the, of the disciple is we've got to get the word out, right? We've got to get the word out wherever we can. We've got to get the word out. In church, out of church, in our neighborhood, around our community, around the world, right? Why, do we, why must we reach across the world? Because Jesus deserves to have his story told. And lastly, because Jesus commands us to go. Jesus commands us to go. How can we reach across the world? I don't have that kind of resources. I, I can't do that. Well, let me give you some surefire ways that you can... Reach across the world. Number one, you can pray. A resource that every believer in Christ possesses in abundance, right? We can pray. Pray for the nations. Get a prayer map. Get a map um, of the nations and just pick a nation and pray. Or may I recommend to you prayercast.com. Prayercast.com. I should put it in the bulletin from time to time. Um, I am a firm believer and user avid user of prayercast.com on our first Wednesday of the month on our Legacy 242 we devote it to prayer and oftentimes uh, we did last month kind of prayed for the persecuted uh, church around the world uh, videos from prayercast.com uh, had the privilege a number of years ago of meeting one of the, the men that started it um, you subs go to their website prayercast.com uh, and they just got by nations, you can, and a couple hundred uh, nations, or by um, just various people groups, uh, various concerns. Three, four minute, very well done video um, showing you the culture of whatever. Last month we looked at North Korea, Afghanistan, and a couple others. Um, and you just get you get a feel for people in that country, in that culture. And then someone from that, that nation is leading you in prayer. It's just fantastic resource. Subscribe to uh, PrayerCast, and you'll get every week, you'll get one or more of their new video drops. It's just a great resource to pray for the nations. Because left to ourselves, we say, God help people in China. And that's wonderful, Right? But if you can be drawn in and see and let, allow God to, to kind of show your heart some of the things in a particular nation, man, it can be helpful, right? Those of you that are familiar with me, uh, it's just a great resource. How can we reach across the world? Well, we can, we can all pray. And most of us can give. Pray, give. Legacy Church, we, we support work in China and Laos and Russia and Germany and Mexico and and Guatemala now the last four years. Um, uh, Don and I have another opportunity to go to Guatemala at the end of January that we're trying to figure out if God's opening that door. Uh, and just a, a way to encourage church leaders across the world. Um, you don't think you have much to offer? Uh, go to a developing or underdeveloped nation and you've got a whole lot to offer. The resources we have available to us um, it's astounding, and, and we can share some of the things that we've gleaned with believers around the world, and what a joy that is. Um, we can all pray. Most of us can give. And some of us can go. Pray, give, go. Ways that we can reach across the world, that we can reach the nations. God has opened doors to many nations today, nations that are not open. God's taking care of it for us. Uh, God, by his spirit, is raising up revival in North Korea, uh, in much of the Middle East, and Southeast Asia, and Eastern Europe. God is doing amazing things. It could go on and on about that. 
But God has opened a door for us to go to some places. And listen, when God, when God opens the door for you, you want to go. Um, I, I like the way uh, Pastor Mark shared it. Um, here's your prayer tip. God, should I go with these knuckleheads to New Orleans? And if he doesn't say no, then you go, right? I, I like that. I kind of I kind of like that. Um, and and it's just hard to argue with, with that. Uh, me, I, I, I'm thankful that I'm able to give, thankful that I'm able to pray, and I'm thankful that God, from time to time, allows me to go, right? It has shaped my heart to um, spend time in Ghana, West Africa, and help... Um, Help most of the time young believers raising up churches and, and villages. Um, what what a delight that was! And spend time in Mexico and 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 strengthen church leaders there. Don and I were able to go to Brazil in 2016, Rio de Janeiro, for the 2016 Olympics, and reach 190 nations um, with booklets in all kind of languages and like like I think I know what you speak. What do you speak? And let me give. Um, and that was just a great time of reaching the nations. Again, the last four years, been able to go to Guatemala and strengthen church leaders in a very, very difficult place. We can all pray. Most of us can give. Some of us can go. Let's do what God opens the door for us to do. Amen? Amen. To reach the world. It's not just about us four and no more and we got what we got. Jesus deserves to have his story told to everyone in every village and every forsaken by man place on the planet, Jesus deserves to have his story told. And God uses all kind of creative ways to move us, to put us, each of us, you and I, in positions to tell his story. Reaching across the world. Jesus deserves it. Jesus commands it. And we must use the opportunities that we have to reach the nations. All of us can pray. Most of us can give. A few of us can go. Let's do what God allows us to do and reach the nations. Guys, I don't know about you, but I want my life to count. When this life is all over, I want to think that maybe I affected somebody's life in some kind of way. And the best way I can affect somebody's life is tell them the Jesus story. What he has done, how he made you how he created you, how you were separated from him because of sin and what he has done to call you back to himself. That's the best way I can serve humanity. And, but we've got to reach beyond ourselves, right? We've got to get beyond the I don't have anything or I don't want to or, and get beyond ourselves and reach out. By way of conclusion, I want to lead us with, uh, leave us with this this morning and then we'll have an opportunity to serve if you want to. No pressure to stay, please. Just opportunity. Um, because God reached down, we must reach out. That's as simply as I could put this message. Because God reached down, we must reach out. Right? What he did for us. Showing his great love for us. The love of Christ ought to compel us. With the Apostle Paul, or at least allow his words to convict us that it's the love of Christ that compels us to reach beyond ourselves. Reach beyond our own needs, reach beyond our own desires, reach beyond our own comfort zone, and reach people with the story of Jesus. Guys, I hope you join us this coming year in, in our outreach to Mardi Gras. Great way to reach the nations, literally. The rest of you. Let's be mindful. Let's be mindful that there is a world beyond me, right? There's a world in need that is in, in need of encouragement. There's a world in need of the story of Jesus. There's a world in need, and we have something to offer. Amen? Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for reaching down. Would you continue to compel us? To reach out. Lord, we don't want to be any more self-absorbed than we already are. Lord, we want to live lives that affect others, that impact others. We want to enrich the lives of, of those around us with those that we just bump into accidentally. 
We want to leave an impact in this world. Or do we want to be effective? We want to be fruitful. Would you teach us? This week, would you be about showing us how to reach out? May, may our gratitude, our giving of thanks, motivate us to acts of gratitude, not just words of gratitude. Lord, our hearts are full of words of gratitude, but we want our lives to be filled with acts of gratitude as well. So, Lord, we thank you on this Thanksgiving week. Thank you for the blessing, maybe some, some downtime, maybe some family time. We thank you for all of that. Thank you for allowing us to serve our community the, this afternoon. And Lord, we thank you for all of it. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen. Amen.